Houses here. Today we're talking about five ways to invest in real estate without a lot of money out of your pocket in just five minutes. This is my assistant, Rick. He's going to be playing a couple of roles for us today. Now we only have five minutes, so we're going to be going into the what. What are these strategies? Okay, in the next five weeks, we're going to be breaking down each strategy and telling you how to do it. Okay, so today, the what five ways to make money in real estate without a lot of money in your pocket. Now I'm a visual person, I think most of us are, yes. so we're gonna do this visually. Okay, so strategy number one is bird dogging. Okay, so you are the audience out there. You are going to be the bird dog. This is the homeowner and they have a house. Okay, so you as a bird dog, you are looking for houses that look abandoned, distressed, or you need a homeowner that needs to sell quickly. Okay, so you get that contact information, either just the address of the property or even better, contact information from the homeowner, and you give that contact information to your investor. Now, the investor and the homeowner are going to negotiate, put the deal under contract. When he closes on that property, you get 10% interest in the deal. Now, there's two ways you can get paid. Either at closing, you can sell your 10% interest for a set fee, usually $1,000, or you can hang on to it a little bit longer for when he sells that property. So it might take him three to six months to renovate the property and sell it. When he sells it, you have 10% interest in that property. So if he makes $50,000, you make 5,000. So two ways to get paid. One at closing, you sell your interest for a set fee, or you wait a little bit longer to get a percentage of the profit. Okay, so strategy number two is wholesaling. Okay, so this is you, the audience. I am going to be contacting the homeowner directly and I'm going to be putting that house under contract with the homeowner. So now I have a contract with this homeowner that I'm going to purchase their house for cash for a set, set price. Okay, now I go to my investor and I say, hey, I've got this great house. I've got a great deal on it. Check out my contract. I want to assign this contract for say $5,000. Are you interested? The investor says, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great house. That's a great deal. Yes, I would. Basically, they're essentially, they're purchasing the contract for you. So I'm going to give them the contract. I'm going to give them an assignment of contract that basically assigns all my interest in the contract to them. Okay. Oh, <laughs> they're going to be uh, buying the house with the homeowner. So I'm, I step out of the way. They purchase the house from the homeowner and I get paid on the closing statement as an assignment fee for whatever we put in the assignment of contract, typically three to $5,000. Okay. Uh, strategy number four is owner financing. Rick is now going to be the homeowner and he owns a house. Okay, I'm you, the audience. I contact the homeowner. Now typically owner financing is with someone who has a free and clear property, which means they don't, they don't have a mortgage on the property. So I say, hey Rick, I'd like to purchase your house. And the way that I can do it is I can pay you a certain amount of money each month until the balance of the loan is paid off. So they basically hold a private mortgage on the property and a note on the property. I take ownership of that property and I now owe them a certain amount of money until the balance is paid off. Much like you would do if you were getting a bank loan. So basically the homeowner is the bank. So I might say I'm purchasing this property for $100,000, okay? Uh, we're doing 5% interest at a fixed rate over 30 years and monthly payments are $500 per month. So every month, for being the owner of this property, I'm giving the note holder, which is was my homeowner, I'm giving him $500 a month until the balance of the mortgage is paid off. Now he gets a better return on his investment versus selling it outright. Okay, um, you can do this with zero down, zero interest. By the way, one of our best rentals we purchased was in Winter Springs. We did zero down, no down payment, no interest on the loan, um, and it rents and the homeowner holds a note and mortgage. And basically we were nothing out of pocket on that one because the rent from the tenants that were already in there paid for our closing costs. So it was like zero into the deal and it cash flows great and it's a nice house in Winter Park, or Winter Springs. Okay, uh, strategy number four is subject to financing. So you own the house, okay? But you, the homeowner, have a bank mortgage on that property, okay? I'm you, I contact you, the homeowner, and I say, I'd like to purchase your house. I see that you have a bank mortgage on it. The way that we're gonna purchase it is I'm gonna take ownership of the house. So now I own the house. The mortgage is going to stay in the homeowner's name, but we are taking over payments on that mortgage. Now again, there's gonna be a note and then a bank mortgage that's already in place. So basically we're taking ownership and we're just taking over the payments, but the payments, the mortgage 
stays in the homeowner's name. Okay, this is a great way to leverage existing financing. Me and my partner bought a house in uh, Titusville. The homeowner wanted a thousand dollars at closing, so we gave him a thousand dollars, took ownership of the house. It had a great uh, bank mortgage in place at three and a half percent. The bank mortgage, uh, the monthly payments are a thousand dollars, and we get fifteen hundred dollars a month in rent, and we got instant equity because we were able to leverage the existing financing. Okay, subject two. Last one is private lending. So you're going to be the private lender. Okay, this is the house. Oh, my stickies are coming off. Okay, so there's a house and a homeowner. I'm you. I say, hi, homeowner, I want to purchase this house for cash. So I get it under contract. I'm going to use cash to purchase your home, but I'm not going to use my cash. I'm going to use my private lender's cash. Okay, this might be anyone, a friend, a colleague, someone who has money in a savings account, an IRA, and they're not making a great return on their investment and they want to put it into real estate. So much like the owner financing example, they're going to hold a private mortgage and a note. So they are going to give me money to purchase this property and that money is secured by a mortgage and I also owe them a certain amount of money at a certain percentage interest rate over a certain period of time every month in order for me to maintain ownership of this property, okay? We do this all the time with our flips. So anytime we purchase a property with cash, we go to our private lenders, they lend us the money, we put it in to renovate and sell, and then once we sell the property, that loan is paid off, okay? Zero money out of our pocket most of the time. Okay, so that's it for today. Again, we're gonna be going into more detail over the next five weeks on how to do this. But in the meantime, my good friend, colleague, and mentor, Augie Bylot, just came out with a great free ebook and it's called the Financial Freedom Blueprint. And you can get that free ebook by either clicking on the link above or clicking on the learn more button below. Go ahead and download it, read it, and it's gonna help you to better absorb all this information as we go through it in the next five weeks as we're gonna be breaking down these strategies into detail on the how to do it. Okay, so that's it. All this information is also gonna be up on my blog page, Carrie's Corner at Carrie Buys Houses. Um, so if you miss anything or you have any questions, you can go to the blog or reach out to me on Carrie Buys Houses page. Is that it? Yep, that's it. You did a great job. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>